Hi guys, it's April and it's time for my Readorama Round 12 wrap up. Because Readorama Round 12 is over, hence the wrap up. I enjoy stating the obvious. I am not 100% sure why. So this week has been a little weird for me, both non reading wise and reading wise. I think I did fairly well on Readorama, totally ignored my TBR as I normally do. But then in real life, I don't normally go into a lot of this stuff, but things are a little weird right now. Most of the state is underwater. There are things going on right now. I am going to still try and keep you guys updated and continuing to do videos and all of that, but there might be some weirdness here and there just dealing with all of the things that are going on. And that's all I'm going to talk about. I'm fine. And this is my wrap up. So for Readorama round 12, I completed 5.5 books. I'm counting it as half a book because that's what I do. And that means I completed at least five of the challenges. By no means did I fully do everything that I wanted to do for Readorama, but given what this week was, I did pretty good. Page wise, I read about 1,721 pages, which means I read about 246 pages a day and it took me on average about a day and a quarter to finish a book. But because I didn't technically finish one of the books, it throws those statistics off a little bit, but I tried to get as close to numbers that I thought were reasonable. So that's kind of where this week sat. Now for the books that I read, I didn't finish the Kenville Incident. This is the one that I'm counting as my half book, even though I didn't technically make it halfway through this book. This is my half book. It was supposed to be my seventh read. I struggled with this book just trying to get myself to read it. You can see all of that happening in my reading vlogs. I will link them down below because wow. The struggle was real. I'm still tempted to finish this book. I don't want to DNF it, but we'll see where that goes seeing as I've been trying to read this for over 80 days. And that's not standard for me. For my most anticipated, I read Mitosis by Brandon Sanderson. This was originally supposed to be my shortest read, but another book appeared out of nowhere and that became my shortest read. This book takes place immediately after Steelheart. It deals with all of the fallout in New Cago after Steelheart ends. It just shows a little bit of what's going on in David's mind with everything that happened at the end of Steelheart. So there are spoilers in this book for Steelheart, so don't read it before you read Steelheart. You can read it before all of the other books, but not before Steelheart, but then you get to see a nether epic named Mitosis and them just taking him down. I really enjoyed coming back into this world and just the humor and the weirdness that David brings to this whole story arc. I love it so much. And for the book that took over the shortest book in my TBR, that would be Who Moved My Cheese? This is a book club book for my work book club. How many times I'm gonna say book in that sentence? This was a read that I needed to do for work. It is one page shorter than mitosis. It tells a story about two mice and two little people who are dealing with cheese inside of a maze and how they handle change and their thought processes and theologies as they deal with everything that is going on. It is supposed to be one of those business books that help you deal with change in the industry and placing what kind of thinker you are and how you deal with those changes and how to deal with all the different kinds of people that handle change differently. That was the weirdest summary of a book. For my blind TBR pool, I read The Naming by Alison Grogan. This is a series that I want to read this year because I have read the first two books in the series, but I never picked up the last two books, and that's what I'm hoping to do. This story follows Mirad, who is a slave girl, but seems to have these interesting abilities to see the world as it truly is. One day there is this Barb who finds her and takes her away from the life she knows into this whole realm that she didn't know existed that involves bards and music and magic. And it is one of those epic tales of a journey into discovering who she is, what her past really means for her future. It is a story that I feel like I've read before in a lot of other different stories, which is why I didn't rate it as high as I, I probably would have if I hadn't read things like any of the Tortal books or the Lord of the Rings or things like that. It feels very standard to a lot of those epic journeys. I honestly didn't remember a lot going into it, but as I read it, it all started coming back to me. I am interested to see where it goes. I'm hoping it picks more up in the later books because this one is just kind of average. And then for my Rama book, a book that wasn't even on my TBR, but I got a digital copy of it from the library, so I knew I could read it both at home and at work, and that was Arch Enemies. 
by Marissa Meyer. This is book two in the Renegade series. This continues on in Nova and Adrian's story as they're trying to figure out which side they truly belong on. They feel pulled in different directions, but at the same time, they're questioning what they were brought up in. I have a full review over this book if you're interested in my more in-depth thoughts on this, but I did enjoy the journey of reading this book, even though I had a tough time trying to separate it from Brandon Sanderson's Reckoner series because there are a lot of similarities between the Sioux series, and I feel Brandon Sanderson did it just a touch better in my mind, but I think it's also because I enjoyed those characters so much more and how he was dealing with good versus evil. I still like how Marissa Meyer is building up these characters and what it means, good and evil. I just struggled with this book because I feel like the same place they started is where they ended. And sometimes that is what a middle book is. It's just building up the backstory and the characters. I just, I wanted more, but I'm still really interested in where this next book is going because of where the cliffhanger was. And then I picked up Reaper at the Gate. This is a book that I slid into wanting to read in 2018 challenge because once again, I got the digital copy of this book as well, which made reading it at different times so much easier. This is by Renee Audier. It is book three in the Ember in the Ashes series. You continue on following a lot of the same characters in this book and the battle between the djinn and humans, just how all of it is pulling all of these characters apart. This book itself is very, very devastating at different points in time. I didn't remember most of the series going into this book, but when I got to a certain point, all of it came flooding back and I became really, really invested, especially towards the end and the way the ending goes. And now I need the fourth book because we can't leave it where it's at. It would just, no, just, just no. So those are the books that I read. I think I forgot to mention that Mitosis was part of my most anticipated read. I think that's where I slid that one in. But overall, that was how I did for Readorama. I'm kind of impressed with how I just kept on sticking it out. I wasn't sure where all of this was going to go, but I do think I ended on a high note. I will also leave some information down below so you can leave your feedback on how you think this round went. I enjoyed interacting with all of you on Twitter. I tried to bring a little bit more of Instagram into play as well. I think I'm gonna bump up my Instagram game next round because that is a platform that I seem to be ignoring a little bit, but I wanna get involved. I'm trying to think of ways on how to start using Instagram Live. So if you have any suggestions, leave them down below. Tell me how you did for Readorama if you participated and I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.